Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to piecewise functions. Let's start with this definition. The best way that I could describe a piecewise function is that it's a function in which the domain is split and represented by sections of various functions. So for example, just focusing on just one single function, if we were to look at the graph of y equals 2x minus 4, that would be a straight line. Generally, this graph has a domain of all reals, so it would go from negative infinity to infinity, right? Anytime you plug in a real number in for x, you're going to get a real number for your output. In a piecewise function, we don't look at the domain from negative infinity to infinity, we just look at a piece of this graph. So for example, in this graph on the right, we're only looking when x is less than or equal to positive 3. So the graph on the right has a domain from negative infinity to positive 3 where positive 3 is included. In this example, this is just a snippet of the graph. This is a ray of the original line. So we just look at one piece of this function, hence piecewise function. Now with a piecewise function, we normally look at more than just one piece. So for example, here's our y equals 2x minus 4 again. And then here's another equation, y equals negative 2x plus 5. For our piecewise functions, what we're going to do is we're going to split up the domain. So remember the domain we talked about for this one, we said that the, normally the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. But for our piecewise function, we looked at just from negative infinity to positive 3. What we're going to see with this one, this one also has a domain from negative infinity to infinity. But we're only going to focus on one piece. And the one piece we're going to look at for our piecewise function is going to be from 3 to infinity. And it's really important to know that we can't have any overlap in the domain. So if 3 is included in the first piece, it cannot be included in the second piece. Because if it's included in both, then it's not a function, right? It's going to fail the vertical line test. So here we have the two pieces of the graph. We have 2x minus 4 stopping at 3 and representing all numbers smaller than 3. And then notice here we use this open circle to represent that it's starting at 3 for the second equation, negative 2x minus uh, plus 5. But then, so it starts here, but it's not included, so we use it that big open circle, and then it goes down where uh, x values are bigger than 3. So this would be an example. This one here is an example of a piecewise function. And what we want to do in this video is we want to focus on where do you plug in these pieces. So you'll notice the equation is set up y equals, then we have our top piece, and our bottom piece. So this separates into two different equations, right? We have one top piece is y equals 2x minus 4, but here's the domain of that top piece. So we only look at this top piece when x is less than or equal to 3. The bottom piece here would be y equals negative 2x plus 5, and we only look at the bottom piece when, when x is bigger than 3. Okay, so in these examples, we're going to evaluate each function at the indicated value. And this is a true setup of a piecewise function. So we have the function name here. We have the brace here to indicate that we're dealing with multiple pieces of equations within one single function. And then we have the, the pieces themselves. And then we have the domain of these pieces. So these here are the domains. or It's telling us where we plug in each of these indicated points. So basically what we're looking at is we're looking at two equations. We have f of x is equal to x plus 3. But for this equation, the domain is only when x is smaller than 0. So we would only plug in values that are in between negative infinity and 0, not including 0. The second equation here of this piecewise function is f of x equals negative x minus 5. And this domain starts at 0 and goes up to infinity. So that tells us which piece we plug into. Some students like to plug into both just for fun. Don't, don't do that. When you get to graphing, there'll be times where you want to do that. But in general, if we're just being asked to evaluate, that's not good. We don't want to do that. You plug into the piece in which that value falls into the domain. So our first example here, we, we're looking at f of negative 2. So we have to decide here, okay, where does negative 2 fall? Is negative 2 in this interval in between negative infinity and 0? Or is it in this interval between 0 and infinity? Negative 2 is smaller than 0, so we're going to plug it into the top piece. So we only plug it into the top piece, and that would be negative 2 plus 3, giving us positive 1. So we would say that f of negative 2 is equal to 1. Okay, how about this one? So here we have f of 0. So now we're 
interested in where does zero fall in the domain? Is zero less than zero or is zero greater than or equal to zero? Zero would fall in the second piece, right? So this one fall, fell in the first piece. Zero is gonna fall into the second piece because it is equal to zero. So when we plug in f of zero, we only plug it in to the piece in which it's defined in the domain, which would be the bottom piece. So this would be negative zero minus five, which would be negative five. So when we evaluate for zero, we end up with a result of negative five. We can also write these as ordered pairs where what we're evaluating is x and what our end result is is y. So we could say that this is the ordered pair negative two, one. This is the ordered pair zero, negative five. It's not really necessary for what we're doing here, but when we get to graphing, we'll wanna know what the ordered pairs are. Okay, and what about, uh, whoops, let's just say f of six. F of six, so where does six fall in our domain? Well, it's not less than zero. It is greater than or equal to zero, so we're gonna plug it into the second piece as well. So this is gonna be f of six is equal to negative six minus five, which would be negative 11. So we could say we evaluated f of six and we ended up with negative 11, or we have the ordered pair six comma negative 11. In this particular example, you'll notice that we have three pieces this time instead of just two. So pay close attention to the domains. I encourage you pause the video and try to evaluate the function at these five indicated values. How'd you do? Okay, I'm just gonna split this up because I think there's gonna be more room that I'm gonna need. So I split this into two slides. First, we're looking at h of negative six. So where does negative six fall? Does it fall into the top piece, piece one, the middle piece, piece two, or the bottom piece, piece three? How do we decide? We see where does negative six make a true statement? So is negative six less than negative four? Is that true? Yes, it is. So that's clearly where we're gonna plug it in. Just to verify, negative four less than or equal to negative six. No, that's not true and negative six is greater than, no, that's not true. So we plug it into where it makes sense or where it falls in the domain. It falls into piece one. So we have h of negative six, we're plugging into piece one. That would be one half times negative six plus seven. And one half times negative six, what's half of negative six? That is negative three plus seven would be positive four. So we can say h of negative six is equal to positive four. Let's try that again, is equal to positive four or we can write it as the ordered pair, negative six comma four. And how about the second, the second uh, value? We have h of negative four. So where does negative four fit? Does it fit into piece one, piece two, or piece three? Well, piece one has a negative four, but it says that negative four has to be less than negative four, which is not true. So negative four is not in the domain of piece one. Negative four is, however, in the domain of piece two, right? If we plug in negative four right here, we would have negative four is less than or equal to negative four, which is less than two, that is true. So we plug in negative four only to piece two. We're gonna say h of negative four, and this just says that it equals negative three. So that's it. There's actually nowhere to plug in because there's no x in that middle piece, that's a horizontal piece. Um, or we could write the ordered pair, so we could say, okay, well, h of negative four is three, or we can say, negative four comma three. How about these last three? So we have zero, does zero fall into piece one, piece two, or piece three? Zero would go nicely in between negative four and two, right? If we put zero there, that would be a true statement. So we plug it into the second piece. So we're plugging into the second piece. We're gonna say F, sorry, not F, H of zero is equal to negative three as well, because anything that goes into that middle piece is going to equal negative three. So we can say negative three, or we can write the ordered pair zero, negative three. For the fourth value, we have two. So where does two plug into? It's gonna go right here, right? Two is greater than or equal to two. That's a true statement. So we plug it into the third piece. So the third piece says h of two is going to equal one over two plus three. One half plus three is three and a half. Or you can say seven halves, or you can say 3.5. And that's all we can do there. So when we plug in two, we get three and a half on the outside, or we can write the ordered pair, what we plugged in, what we got out. And the last one, we have h of five. Where does five go? Does it go into piece one, piece two, or piece three? Five is bigger than or equal to two, so it goes into piece number three. When we plug in, we're gonna say h of five is equal to one over five plus three. And when we combine those, we will get three and one fifth. So we could say h of five is equal to three and one fifth, 
or we can write the ordered pair 5 comma 3 and 1 fifth. This has been an introduction to piecewise functions. Thank you for stopping.